potentially a controversial message, but it's a message that echoes a wider African story of a continent impoverished by a legacy of racism, colonialism, and neocolonialism, and of course, apartheid. It's called Godianism, a sort of African religious philosophy that sought to make itself relevant to what its proponents hope will be a growing congregation. They've held several conferences and seminars, including one that took place at the United Nations as far back as the 1960s, educating people on what they see as the crisis of black existence in the world, while at the same time emphasizing the psychological effect of what they say is foreign religious occupation through Christianity and Islam, something they argue has helped perpetuate injustice in Africa and is part of what they claim is the deliberate miseducation of Africans. One of their central arguments, made nearly 60 years ago at the United Nations by the founder of Godianism, the late Nigerian politician and philosopher, Chief Keoke Onyoha, is that religion has to be decolonized. Over the years, we have remained borrowers. Economically, we are beggars, we are borrowers. Technologically, we are beggars, we are borrowers. Ideologically, we are beggars, we are borrowers. In religious philosophy, the black man is a beggar, he is a borrower. And naturally, he who goes a borrowing, goes a sorrowing. You can never claim equality with the people from whom you very much borrow. That is the reason why we are presenting to all of you Gordianism and asking you to rally around it as an umbrella to which you will come together when the interest of the black man is at stake. We are the only race in the world that hasn't got any ism under whose umbrella we can rally when the interest of the black man is at stake. For more on the tenets of Godianism, I'm joined now from Atlanta, Georgia. Udemizwe, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, it could be said that his great selling point was in his person and his politics because he was something of a dedicated African philosopher and a political reformer, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He really was. He dedicated uh, over 50 years of his life, you know, in the fight for independence in Nigeria and also to, uh, you know, work on the mind of the Africans, understand that uh, we've always been capable of original thinking. And uh, his premise, for the most part, was the fact that of all the human races in the world, Africa is the only race of humans that does not have its own philosophy, right? We have our own philosophy, but it was never systematized like all other world religions like Islam and Christianism. So he just wanted to show the world that Africa has always been capable of, you know, original thought, but we had our own spirituality before the Europeans came to our shores with the Bible and the Arabs came with uh, the Quran. He stressed the fact that culture is the backbone of a people. All human systems are products of religion. And when the interest of the black man is threatened, we don't have any spiritual or religious philosophy that we could rally around, you know, and address our interest. The Jews, when their interest is at stake, they rally around uh, uh, Judaism. When the Europeans, uh, when their interest is at stake, they rally around Christianism. When uh, uh, the, the Arabs, when their uh, 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 interest is at stake, they rally around Islam. But when our interest is at stake, we don't rally around anything that is authentically African. And that is really the reason why we are not really respected outside of the continent, because the world feels that we have nothing to offer to the world as food for thought, which, of course, as you probably already know, that is very wrong. We knew about Chineke, we knew about God before anybody came to tell us about God. And if you look at African names, for example, from the Igbo tribe, we have names like Chukuma, God knows, Chukudi, God is, Chukwemeka, God has done great things. So we already had the name and principles that address God's goodness to us before the European came. So as far as I'm concerned, if you look at most African tribes, you'll find out, you'll find out that most of the names that are given to people had spiritual and religious context behind it. So it is kind of crazy to think that 
we knew nothing about Chineke before the Europeans and the Arab came to our shores. And what we're trying to do is to stress the philosophy of Chiism, also known as Guardianism, and ask people of African ancestry all over the world to rally around something that they could call their own, just like all other nations rally around their own cultural, spiritual philosophies. Yes, we may call God, or you know, or many names, Olodumare in Yoruba, uh, Obangiji, Tamuna, uh, Jiami, Nkulu Nkulu, and what have you. And in Igbo language, we say Chineke or Chuku. But at the end of the day, we are all stressing right. the same okay. Yeah. I'm just going to come in there, uh, uh, Udemy, uh, Mr. Onyoha, um, because, of course, I mean, th this was the I was watching the tape that your father made um, at the United Nations in those days. Um, I mean, though he was respected, I mean, he's saying essentially what you were saying. He was never revered enough for the philosophy he espoused, that of Godianism, to become the philosophy he so wanted Africans to adopt. At independence. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, what I would like to let people understand is that Gordianism, you know, Chiism, was part of the struggle for independence in Nigeria. Uh, uh, historically speaking, of course, when you look at the historical records, in 1943, uh, Dr. Nandia Zikwe, who later became the governor general of uh, Nigeria, you know, had written a one man memorandum you know, uh, to the uh, British uh, secretary in West Africa back in 1943, asking for independence for African nations in 15 years. And at that time, everybody thought that he was crazy. There was a, you know, a, a, a reverend who actually said, does this black devil think that he could rule himself? How ungrateful is Zeke after what the British government had done for us. I mean, that's how people were thinking back then, you know, because the man was really so totally messed up. Now, fast forward, they believe that not only did we need to be emancipated physically, take the chains off, but we also needed to be emancipated mentally so that we could be ready for nation formation, nation building, and nation management, just like all other nations do. But the thing about it is right after independence, Everybody left the National Church of Nigeria because that's what it was originally called. And it was formed in 1950 at uh, Ibutemeta in uh, Lagos. So the movement continued until Nigeria gained independence. And then in 1962, the National Church of Nigeria got together with the Edo National Church of the Benin people in Nigeria, headed by Oba Akenzwa II, to form Gordianism in 1963. Right. So the, there is an element of uh, that's that's a point I wanted you to bring out the, the an, an element of universality about it. I mean, it's not limited to one or two ethnic groups. It's it's universal. But I wanted to ask you, is Godianism exclusively for Africans and black people or does it transcend race and color? Well, it, it's a spiritual uh, practice and belief system that comes from Africa, but it has universal application. And one of those universal applications is one of the highest spiritual maxims of Gordianism, which is biri and biri in Igbo language, which means live and let live. You will agree with me that there is no nation in this world, you know, on the surface that doesn't believe in live and let live. And that is a, a, a spiritual a tenet that if we all adopt globally, biri and biri, live and let live, and stop practicing what we call in religious philosophy, exclusive truth my way or the highway peace will reign on earth you wouldn't have all these religious conflicts that we have right now i mean look at nigeria for example boko haram is up in the north espousing islam but true islam does not espouse the violence that boko haram is uh you know uh, uh, embracing right every muslim i'm sure wants to live in peace every christian wants to live in peace every buddhist wants to live in peace there is no religion in this world that does not want to live in peace very interesting to chat with you and hopefully we'll get the chance to uh, hear more about Gordianism at some other time and that's one of the advocates of that new african philosophy uh, demizwe on your there talking to me from atlanta that's it for this edition of the arise interview do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in abuja and the united states bye bye and thank you for watching